O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Welcome to Living Word Church. Hello, Living Word Church. It is a pleasure to be here in front of you in whatever device you're using to hear the Word of God today. Definitely, I'm glad to be in the house of God. I was actually waiting for a text message from my pastor and hoping that he would just tell me, come on over so I can come to this place. I understand that uh, we can have church at the house, but let me tell you, there's something about this place. But nevertheless, I miss every one of you. Uh, the worship, uh, the way that we can talk to each other after service, I definitely need, need, need that. And it's not that I'm super spiritual because I want it to be a church. It's just that I'm not spiritual enough. That is the reason why I always like to come to church. But as I was coming in to this uh, place, I was uh, I had some some somewhat conviction in my in my life because I was missing this place so much, and uh, that little voice in my head told me, "It's like, well, even though you might not be able to come to this specific building, uh, you should make your house a house of prayer, not only a house of entertainment, not only a house." of uh, just fun and games, but a house of prayer. And not only that, a house of praise and a house of worship. Your house, as Joshua was saying, could be the house of the Lord. So I encourage you to take this moment right now and to place in your mind that you can worship with me. You can adorate your God with me. You can praise the Almighty God as you are watching this message right now. So, a little bit of an introduction. Let me tell you that uh, last month was my birthday, and uh, I really liked it so much that, because uh, I don't know about you, but I enjoy birthdays, and I'm only telling you this so I can give you my address. You can send me some. I'm just kidding. I'm just telling you this because when I celebrated my birthday, I celebrated the day of my birthday. I celebrated the, the, the weekend of my birthday. People were calling me the next week of my birthday. I was celebrating so much uh, that it was just so cool. And uh, as a matter of fact, I, I think I'm going to go get a cake somewhere and celebrate a little more. I'm telling you this just to tell you that this past week we had Easter. And uh, I know that this is a weird time that we're living on right now. And, and there's just too many distractions. And uh, it doesn't feel like Easter. As a matter of fact, I came with my nice colored tie just to celebrate Easter, even though today uh, is past that day. But can you allow me to celebrate Easter a little more? Can you allow me to to just extend the celebration of my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Why? Because I know this is a time to think about a lot of things. This is a time of depression. But for me, I want to celebrate, even though and trying to forget everything that's going on and trying to focus on my God and my Savior. With that said, I want to uh, place your attention to the book of Matthew. Matthew, this, this, this chapter is pretty intense, 
And uh, we're going to read chapter number 27. We're going to go all the way down to verse 62. Matthew, once again, chapter 27, verse 62 and on. And it says, Now, the next day that followed, the day of the preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while well, he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again, and command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Tonight, I want to speak to all of you under this title. This diversion will not stop my celebration. This diversion will not stop my celebration. So we all know that the doctors of the law and that time, the time that Jesus was walking on the earth, the ministry of Jesus Christ on this earth, there was contention between the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the doctors of the law uh, against Jesus. They they were not liking uh, his teachings. They were not liking his doctrine. They were not liking the way he was portraying the law of God. And they were always trying to bring loaded questions into the sight of the master. So they will ask any question just to try to show people that Jesus was not the Messiah that he was claiming to be, that he was not who he was saying that he was. Nevertheless, they knew the law very well. Doctors of the law, they knew the law very well. But Jesus, God manifested in the flesh, was the one who inspired the law in the first place. So it is interesting to know that they were trying. Uh, the, the students were trying to trick the teacher, in a sense, and we all know how that ended. That ended pretty bad for them because Jesus was able not, able not only to see or to hear what they were saying, Jesus was able to actually go inside their hearts to see the intentions that they had. Not saying that religion is bad. As a matter of fact, I am for religion. Let me tell you, good religion, as James uh, always talks about, but this man, the doctors of the law, were trying to do something that was against of what God wanted to do at that time. But let me make a pretty harsh statement. And let me tell you that I am thankful and grateful for the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Why? Because they were all doing what God wanted them to do. Although they pay a high price for it, I am thankful for it. Now, why do I say that? I say that because everything was supposed to happen like it happened for us to celebrate. Now, the doctors of the law, it came a time where they couldn't do much for, for the situation with Jesus. Everybody, the, the people uh, in the land were for Jesus. Jesus had his disciples going on and going uh, uh, and doing great things for, for, for the people and for the kingdom of God. So the doctors of the law got fed up. They decided to do something about the master. And they started plotting against Jesus. They started plotting against the Savior. They started plotting against that man who came to save all the nations in the world. At that time, Jesus was healing the sick. He was transforming cities as he was speaking to the people. But that was not enough to stop the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the doctors of the law that were against Jesus. So they plotted against him to kill the Messiah, to kill Jesus. It was intense to know and understand that this man were so desperate to shut down 
Jesus to shut down the truth as we know it today, to shut down what Jesus was trying to do. They were all uh, they, they went all in and even tried to use and ended up using, as a matter of fact, one of Jesus' own disciples, as Judas. And of course, they were very successful. They were very successful in the sense that they were able to take Jesus to his death row. And we all know that Jesus died on a cross, and they were involved in this situation. Because this man, according to what they were saying and according to the statements that they were making and according to the way they were portraying themselves, didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. They thought that Jesus was, was just somebody that, that was just speaking lies, that, that was speaking heresies. But as the, Bible trans, uh, as the Bible speaks to us, as Jesus was going to his death row, as Jesus was fixing to be crucified, and then was crucified, and then died on the cross for us, something really interesting happened. And I am going to speculate here because, because of what we just read. After three days, I will rise again. After three days, I will be out of the tomb. That's, that's, that was the declaration that the, 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 the doctors of the law were giving Pilate. He was saying that he will be coming again. So he, if he's the Messiah, this is, it, it, it might happen. So in a sense, and the way I see it, is that they, might, they, they, were, they were probably thinking that the disciples will come and steal the body so that, that there will be, uh, there will be some, some revolution happening. But they might have thought that if they made a mistake, if he was really the Messiah, wow, we're going to be in trouble. So they begged Pilate, hey, Pilate, please, please, could you send some guards just in case, just in case this happens, just in case this, this, this goes on. We, we just want to make sure that nobody else will steal the body of Jesus Christ. And who, who knows what they were thinking in that moment. But they knew, they understood that Jesus was telling his disciples at all times and, and, and the people and the prophecies were there that at the third day, the Messiah will be risen from the dead. So in a sense, they understood, these guys were under, had more understanding of the resurrection of the Messiah, if that was to happen, than the disciples. Because they were guarding the tomb. They wanted the tomb to be guarded just in case something happens. But the disciples themselves, they were so caught up in the situation, in the death that was going on, that they didn't even consider in a way that Jesus might come back from the dead. But the doctors of the law had a suspicion that something could happen. You know, it happens. The people that were so far from Jesus' doctrines were the doctors of the law. They, 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 they wanted nothing to do with Jesus, nothing to do with the Messiah, nothing to do with the Savior. Why? Because in their minds, well, he is the son of a carpenter. He cannot be our Messiah. What we are looking for is uh, a king, a mighty king, a powerful king for it to be the Messiah. And so the real people, the people that had a relationship with him, the disciples, people that were close to the Messiah Jesus, unfortunately, they were, they, if the Bible portrays that they, they were not really looking forward for the third day because they were in pain. The death of Jesus was blinding 
the mind of the chosen one. The travel of the cross was blinding the minds of the chosen one. That situation was blinding the mind of the chosen one. And per se, the enemies of the Messiah, in a sense, doctors of the law, they were trying to make sure the resurrection didn't happen. There are a lot of things that are trying to distract us. You know, I really miss, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be transparent with you, I, I, I dearly miss to come to church and to worship God. I dearly miss to come to church and to jump up and down, singing songs to my God and my Savior. I really miss running around the aisles when a preacher will make a good statement about my God. I miss it. And the reason that I miss it is not because I cannot have it, because I have a house and I have plenty of space to run around. I have plenty of space to raise my hands. I have plenty of space to do the things that I do at the church. But because I am so concerned and so worried about the things of the world, I am not allowing myself to celebrate the reason why I am here in this church right now, the resurrection of my God and my Savior. So I guess what I'm trying to say tonight to all of you is that, number one, we have a reason to celebrate. Number two, we have a place of worship. Because again, like Joshua was saying, me and my house we will serve the Lord. And if I can add a little bit to it, not to add to the Bible, but to the statement, me and my house should worship the Lord. Me and my house should praise the Lord. Me and my house should adore and dance because of my God. Yes, the disciples were so distraught and they were distracted. Why? Because what was happening was just so real and so intense. And they forgot that Jesus was telling them all the time. He's like, you don't, you don't have to worry. Everything is going to be covered. Everything is going to be all right. On the third day, it's going to happen. And I'm taking, uh, I'm taking poetic license to say this because I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm not here to, to condone the doctors of the law. They were just trying to do what they thought was right. But if I could just place them in the, in, the, in, in, in the context of an enemy because, in a sense, uh, they became the enemy of Jesus, uh, per se, of course. But if I transpire that to nowadays, the enemy knows that if the church, that as a matter of fact is in quarantine right now, would worship God in their homes like they did in the church, Something will break loose. So I want to ask you right now, I don't know, I don't know how you're dressed, I don't know how you I don't care what's going on right now at your home. What I care is if you just could worship God with me for just a moment, for just five seconds. Allow yourself to clap your hands. Allow yourself to raise your hands. Allow yourself to say hallelujah if you like to. I love you, Jesus, if you like to. Why? Because he deserves it. Because he is reason, because he is God, and because he has done so much for us that he deserves our worship. Not our half attention, not our, not our, uh, our little commitment. Because, I mean, I'm not a Christian just for, for the mere reason, and I don't behave like a Christian just because I come to church. I behave as a Christian because I know who he is. So why don't we worship right now for just a moment and just adore the name of our almighty God because he deserves it. He is our hope. He is our savior. He is our salvation. He is our everything. 
And I am glad to say and to give you the good news, nothing can stop your celebration when you're determined to understand that God is for you. Bless the mighty name of the Messiah. Let me tell you, the doctors of the law, unfortunately, didn't want it. Their hope to look like a carpenter. Sometimes we want our, our, our hope to be maybe, maybe a check from the government, maybe a vaccine, maybe something of that nature. But let me tell you, the only hope that I have in my life and in my household is the hope that God has my back. And therefore, I celebrate. And therefore, I worship. And therefore, I just raise my hands to the Messiah. So, the deal is that the disciples, once Jesus was risen from the dead, and, and, and after a while, when he presented himself to them, then they were able to celebrate. Let me tell you that wherever you are, we right here, right now, we can feel the presence of God. And we understand that God is with us. And therefore, we celebrate. You are in your home right now. I'm declaring that you can feel the presence of God in your place of worship. That is your home right now. And I know that because God is in your home, you have a right to celebrate. So, in essence... What I'm trying to tell you is that Jesus came to his disciples. Jesus came to his people first, and his people were able to celebrate with him. Now, the tomb was empty. Jesus was not in there anymore. He was not in the tomb then. He was not in the tomb now. So because of that, because it's not a tomb anymore, and because that was happening then, that became some trouble for the doctors of the law. Why? Because now everything they worked for, everything they plotted was in danger. Now we have a problem. Now we have a situation. Now, now, now what if he was really the Messiah? What have we done? And instead of repentance, they try to cover up what they've done. Let me just, you probably, if you still have your Bibles on you, let's just go to the next chapter real quick. Matthew 28, chapter, uh, verse 12. Matthew 28, verse 12 and 13 says, and when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers. And that's talking about the doctors of the law, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while, while we slept. This man decided to pay off the guards. The guards that knew, I mean, how privileged were the guards that were able to witness the resurrection of the Messiah? Not even the disciples were so privileged to, to witness the resurrection, but the guards were. This is not in my notes, but let me tell you. The world is going to try to pay off your witnessing of the Holy Ghost, let me tell you. It's gonna, the world is going to try to tell you, hey, you know what? Hey, I know that you have experienced the Holy Ghost. I know you have experienced the Pentecostal movement. I know you have experienced everything. And, and, but but I, have, I have money for you. So you will say, hey, hey, that nev nothing ever happened to me over there. Nothing ever happened to me in that church. Nothing ever happened to me at that moment in time. I, ne I never saw anything. And that was for free because it wasn't in my notes. But we're not sold out. We're, we're not sellouts. I'm sorry. We're sold out for God. That's what we are. Nevertheless, let me just go back to where I, what I'm trying to say. And it's that these men were working so hard. 
to cover up the greatest news that the world had at that time and that the world has till this day. Because they, they, didn't want it, the, the, they didn't want the government to know, oh, he's reason. They didn't want the people to know, oh, Jesus is reason. They didn't want nobody else to know more than the disciples because they couldn't stop it. If Jesus is reason, I mean, he's going to go to his disciples. So let's go ahead and try to keep it in the down low. And let's try to put people's attention on so, somewhere else so they will not come to God. They will not, they, they will not be part of the resurrection celebration. So they created, of course, a diversion. You know what? Well, his disciples took him. It was all a lie. Let me bring doubt into your mind. Let me bring doubt into everybody's mind. It is just a lie. But nevertheless, even though this were news to that city, that place, that empire, that time, the disciples never stopped celebrating. As soon as they were able to see the Messiah, as soon as they were able to see Jesus, as soon as they were able to see that the resurrection was real, they started the celebration. And let me tell you that that celebration became a transformation. That, that transformation became the church of that day and the church of today. So don't underestimate the power of celebration. You know, sometimes we're, 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 just, we're, we're just sad because we're just so focused on other things. But when we celebrate, we are allowing the good news of the gospel to be a life changing for us. Again, I go back to my birthday. I celebrate because I became alive back in uh, 1988. And today I celebrate because uh, I was reborn again for the blood of the Messiah because the Messiah was risen. Not because he died, but because he died and then was risen. So that is definitely enough for me to celebrate. So now, this is very interesting, and I, I, I kind of want to uh, do something with this because I understand that we're in the time of information. I understand that we're in the time of media. I understand that we're in the time of, of, of where everybody's just using their cell phones and stuff like that. So, and let me tell you, uh, sometimes that can be pretty distracting as well. So we got to be careful in what we're doing in, in our idle time in this time of need. And in this time of celebration. But I want to do, as everybody's doing now, I want to do a challenge. I have a challenge for you all. I understand that today is past the Easter Sunday celebration. I understand that I am a few days late for what we're accustomed to do. But I'm sorry. Once again, I'm still celebrating. Because he is still, he, he, he was risen Sunday, but he's still risen today. He's still alive. So I want to challenge you, not now, because we, we are in service, and of course, we're, we're not in our cell phones unless we're watching YouTube, right? Not even we're vacuuming, or we're, we're, not, we're not doing none of that. Of, of course, we're not. But I want to challenge you after this message, you take your cell phone. And if you are one of those who uses social media, I want you to post something about your Savior. Not something, some depressing news. Not some, oh, I'm going to die. Not some, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, what's going to happen with my finances. But I want you to post something about your Messiah. To post something about the fact that you're celebrating today. That he is still alive, even though we're past Resurrection Sunday. So I want you to go ahead and either type something, either post a video of you dancing to the Lord or praising your God. And I want you to hashtag this. Jesus is still alive. As for us, 
Don't be afraid to worship God wherever you are. And don't be afraid to worship God even if you're in pain. Let me tell you that the best medicine that I know for pain and sorrow, for, for worrying and, and, and for, for depression, for anxiety, is worship. Worship will bring us the right perspective in this time of need. Worship will allow us to understand that no diversion will stop our celebration. God bless you.